morning. Good morning. And welcome to the Lord's house as we gather for worship and praise today. Today we're continuing our Advent series. Uh, we are doing a series called Wait Upon the Lord. Last week we focused on the word hope. I'm sorry, on faith, and this week we're focusing on the word hope. To begin our worship, we'll turn to the front for the invocation and call to worship. We come together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. That's what Isaiah said. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall walk and not faint. Wait upon the Lord. Be strong in your grace. Wait upon the Lord. We open with our opening hymn, number 349, Heart the Glad Sound. God forever. Amen. 
Please be seated. Our first reading is from Isaiah chapter 40. It's also the basis for our sermon today. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth? He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle readings from Romans 8. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. Now, hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise for the gospel acclamation. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Those who wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. Hallelujah! Our holy gospel for today is from John chapter 1. And just as a footnote, please note that when you hear the word, the word, think of in terms of Jesus. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and, that, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated, and at this time, we are going to have our children. If there are any kids that want to come forward, please do so now. Any more kids? Any ideas? 
Okay, we're hoping for Jesus' birth. Looking forward to that. Great. Allie? Sorry? We hope for forgiveness. <clears throat> That's right. Very good. Okay, I wrote some statements down of things that you might hope for. So I too, even when I was a little girl until now, I hope it snows for Christmas. I'd like snow for Christmas. Um, maybe at one point or another you thought when you had a math test coming up, um, you hope to get an A on that test. Have you ever thought of that? Maybe? Yeah. All right. Um, if you play sports, you might hope that your team will win. Is that fair? Yeah. Okay. And maybe for Christmas, you might hope to get whatever is on your mind. I put down the Nintendo Switch because I just saw a commercial for it last night. I don't even know what it does. Or, but maybe that's something you're hoping for. And finally, something really simple, maybe you're going to hope to have pizza for dinner. Right? So those are all things that we might hope for. And there's lots of other things that we might say, I hope for, and whatever that is. But these types of hope are not sure things. Because even though Dakota and I are hoping for snow, it might not happen. Because if you remember, a couple of years ago, it was so warm on Christmas, we could go out without our coats. All right? So we can hope for it, but it may not happen. You can hope to get an A on the math test, but if you don't study, you might not get it. Or you might study really hard, and there might be questions on there that you just you don't remember. So you might not get an A, you might get a B. You might hope that your team wins tonight, but guess what? The other team's hoping the same thing. So unless there's a tie, somebody's going to be disappointed. So that hope is not a sure thing. Christmas gifts, we hope to get them, but we might not. And the people at my house, they can hope to get pizza on a Wednesday night, but chances are it's not going to happen, because Friday night is pizza night. <laughs> All right? So these are all things we might hope for, but they're not certain. But the type of hope that we're talking about today on this second Sunday of Advent is a sure thing. It's the hope we have in Jesus as our Savior. And I love how Dakota mentioned Jesus' birthday before, and Callie mentioned forgiveness. Those are sure hope statements. We have the sure hope of eternal life in heaven with Jesus one day. We have the sure hope of God's love for us. That's why he sent Jesus as a baby over 2,000 years ago for us. That is a sure hope. We have the sure hope of the forgiveness of our sins, Callie. Because of Jesus' death and resurrection, we can be sure of that. The prophet Isaiah, Pastor John read in the first reading today, told God's people that this sure hope would give them strength and cause them to soar on wings like eagles. This sure hope makes us incredibly happy and brings us joy, which is going to bring us to next week's focus. So join us next week in person or online when the uh, theme next week is going to be joy. So have a week filled with hope in our Savior. Thanks for coming up. You can do Have a great week. At this time, we'll hear our hymn of the day, number 347, and we'll sing it. Comfort, comfort, ye my people.
Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. An interesting study recently came out about 122 men who had suffered a heart attack. The researchers evaluated the men's recovery based on their hope. The researchers found that of the, 20, of the 25 men with the least hope, 21 died within 8 years. Of the 25 with the most hope, only 6 died after 8 years. It seems that the, the loss of hope is in direct correlation to the odds of death by more than 300%. They concluded that lost hope seems to be a good indicator of death more accurately than things like blood pressure or the amount of earlier heart damage or even cholesterol levels. I would suggest to you that it's because hope is what drives us. Hope is what pushes us forward. Hope gives us a confidence of something to look forward to. And in that looking forward, hope overcomes. Even when it seems to be a, a Herculean obstacle. That's what happened at the U.S. College of William and Mary in Williamsburg, Virginia. It was founded in 1693 and had a great history. But after the American Civil War, in the mid-1800s, the college had to close its doors. And the result was that weeds grew on the campus. Roofs tumbled in. Windows were broken. It was all going to be lo uh, lost with time and absorbed into history except for the hope and the efforts driven by that hope of one man. His name was Benjamin Ewell. Ewell, in hope of a new beginning for William and Mary, he, he went to the bell tower of the school every morning and he rang the bells, calling students to class, even though there weren't any students and there weren't any professors, yet he did it every single day. For seven years, in hope, every day, Benjamin Ewell rang the bells at the college. Ewell, he, he refused to become bitter and frustrated. He refused to become broken. He refused to give up hope. Ewell believed that one day, William and Mary would thrive again. And you know the result of Ewell's hope? The College of William and Mary, they in fact did reopen in 1888, and today it's one of the foremost colleges in all the world. You know, hope. Hope is what drove Ewell, and it's what causes us to do things like get up in the morning, get dressed, it's what causes us to look past the moments of struggle to the possibilities down the road. It inspires the what could be times, and it encourages us. Hope. Man has always needed it, and God has always provided it, even in the most difficult of circumstances. Right from the beginning, our Lord has been giving hope to his people. I mean, it wasn't long after the creation of the world that man needed that hope. When Satan tempted Adam and Eve with the promise to be like God, if they just ignored his commands and take a bite of that forbidden fruit, we know that Adam and Eve, we know that they did and ushered in a life of struggle, a life of, as it says to the woman, he said, I will make your pains and childbearing very severe, and your desire will be for your husband, and he will rule over you. To Adam, God said, cursed is the ground because of you, and eventually for both of you, for dust you are, and the dust you will return. 
to God. Our God is a God of forgiveness. He's a, a God of hope. And being so in love, in that same breath of just condemnation, God spoke a promise of new hope. The promise of a Savior from eternal separation. To the snake, God said, I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. You see, through that woman's promised offspring, hope was to come. Hope of deliverance from things like eternal death, salvation from sin, and rescue from the devil's hold. It would come as this offspring would be, would bruise the devil's head, actually crush him, actually defeat his hold. And these words, they became the hope of man, and they became his future. But you know, as time passes, before the advent of the promised offspring of the woman, last week, we heard a I don't know if that fuzz is me. I know, so you were checking that. What is that, Elizabeth? It's driving over. There you go. There we go. Oh, look at that. What a fix. There you go. Last week, we heard a top up of hope that was given to Abraham, given to Sarah who trusted in faith and they waited in hope. I will make you exceedingly faithful, fruitful, and I will make you into nations, and kings shall come after you. That's what God promised. And they were fruitful, The time marched on. And the problem was is that even with that faith, the Savior wasn't quick in coming. That's the hardest part of hope, isn't it? The waiting. You know the feeling of promises that have been made and unfulfilled, and, and especially if it wasn't speed. I mean, who here has been given a promise by someone and then ended up being let down because they didn't follow through on the promise? Or it just seemed to take forever, and finally you just kind of gave up. You didn't expect to see the results to the promise. And you know who here... Who here hasn't made a promise to someone and you ended up not being able to follow through? Or it took you forever and you felt awful that it took so long for whatever reason. The waiting, the jades are hopes. It makes us skeptical. And we can even give up hope. Hope that it will come to pass. You know, I know a couple who made cruise plans and just days before they were leaving, well, COVID hit. They rescheduled only to be canceled again. Multiple holds, holdouts of hope, they continue to be dashed. No, they would just turn this thing off. <laughs> Most recently, renewed hope was given with 2022. And you know, now with this Omicron virus, the threatening to dash their hopes. It's yet again playing with their minds. It's playing with their hearts. It's playing with their emotional well-being. You know, it's, it's wonderful, some would say, a miracle even, whatever hope finds it's revealing and it comes to pass. But you know, in hope, we oftentimes must wait for that hope. And that's the struggle. That's when doubts creep in. That's when we begin to question, and we even question our Lord. But you know, today what we hear in our readings is that hope is yours, and not misplaced when it is in the Lord's promises. That was the message that Isaiah shared to God's people as they were waiting. Like Ewell, who was ringing the bell at William and Mary and Hope, Isaiah's task was to keep on ringing the bell, the hope of promise that was given to Adam and Eve, 
the encouragement to hold on in faith that was given to Abraham and Sarah, to the people in exile in Isaiah's day, the Lord encouraged Isaiah. He said, comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, that she is received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. In other words, Isaiah was encouraged to hold out hope to those captives in spite of it all and in spite of how long it takes. He was to tell them that there is coming a day and he tells us what's going to happen. Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall soar on wings like eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not grow faint. You know, that word wait in our text is the same Hebrew word for the word hope. You see, waiting means Waiting with hope. Hope means hoping while we wait. And here is the hope that Isaiah holds out for the children of Israel. Isaiah tells them just a little bit later about this suffering servant. A servant who would take on flesh and blood in Bethlehem. Isaiah said that the servant will grow up and one day give his back to those who strike him and his cheeks to those who would pull out his beard. He said that the servant will not hide his face from things like mocking and spitting. The servant, he said, will be pierced for our transgressions. He will be crushed for our iniquities. Isaiah said that he would even be led like a lamb to the slaughter, and like a sheep before its shears is silent, he will not open his mouth. Isaiah assured that this servant will give himself over to suffering and death and feel the whip and hear the sound of a hammer hitting the nails. This suffering servant that you are waiting for, this hope that you are clinging to, Isaiah shares with them all about him, and his name is Jesus. You know, hope, hope for the people then, hope for us today, it comes in that servant. But you know, it would take time. It would take God's time. And Isaiah tried to encourage the people in his day that their task as believers was to wait in hope for that day. And their hope, their waiting, it would not be in vain. That was his assurance. That at just the right time, God would fulfill his promise. And you and I, we have the advantage of knowing that he did just that. God sent his son. God sent an angel, Gabriel, to the virgin named Mary and denounced that she would conceive the Savior by the power of the Holy Spirit, and that she would bring forth the promised one into the world. The offspring that Eve had heard about, the descendant that Abraham and Sarah looked for, the desire of the nations was to be born in a little town called Bethlehem to fulfill the hopes and dreams of God's people. Now what hopes were wrapped up in those swaddling clothes? What hopes laid in that manger? With the advent of Jesus, the fact is, is that the hope was that he would take care of the devil, that he would break his hold, as well as the power of sin and death. And again, as they placed their hope, it was not misplaced. In this child born of Mary, the devil was outmatched because Jesus is true God in flesh. He is the almighty Lord of hosts. But it wasn't with a wave of his all-powerful hand that Jesus defeated the devil or broke the power of sin and death. Instead, it was with his hands and his feet as they were nailed to a cross 
That's where Jesus crushed the serpent's head. By his suffering and death and resurrection, Jesus broke Satan's back and delivered us from the power and kingdom of darkness. The fact is, it's for you and I today. We know that we no longer are captives to sin. We no longer live in fear of death. Through faith in Jesus, the Apostle Peter, he said it well when he said that we are given a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. And you see, because of Jesus, because of the one who is the resurrection and the life, you and I, we can go about our days waiting, but we wait in hope. We wait knowing that we live with him every step of the way. And we will live eternally, even though we die. You see, in forgiveness, sin doesn't have the last word. Jesus does. And his last word to believers is, you are forgiven. You are free. You are mine. Come to the place I have prepared for all believers. You know, each day we do a lot of waiting. Each day our hope is tested. Because so many things are going on all around us and to us. But you know, as you and I, as we wait, we can wait in hope. We can hope for the day that will come when the Lord is ready. But as we wait, we can go through each day knowing that whatever it is in life that we're wrestling with, whatever's trying to rob us of hope, our hope remains in the Lord, who has already rescued us, who's promised us his grace, his strength, and hope in our hours of trial and affliction. Jesus also assures us that one day all of this is going to end when he comes again. So we can carry on each day and wait in hope, knowing that nothing is too big that he can't and he won't handle in his way as he knows is best for us. He will see us through the plans that he has for us. So as Isaiah said, those who wait, those who hope upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall soar on wings like eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not grow faint as they hold on and hope to the Lord. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds clinging to Christ Jesus in hope. Amen. And at this time, we will sing the offertory prayer as the offering is brought forth.
food and water issues, uh, lack of those things for quite some time. And now with this new variant and being in lockdowns, it's made it even more severe. So we've been praying for the people of Madagascar on behalf of our member up at Berea, um, who, who lives there part-time, lives here part-time. We also want to lift up a prayer for the ongoing issues with COVID that are going on and these new variants. We lift up the flood issues that are going on both on the East Coast and on the West Coast. We also add to our prayers um, Kyle and Cheryl and Marion and Anthony and Robert who are celebrating birthdays. We add David and Bennett and Ursel, Lauren and Robin and Travis as they celebrate baptismal birthdays. We also lift up a, a minister and his ministry. We lift up Reverend Ramirez who serves in Nicaragua. Please rise for prayer. Lord God, you declared Israel to be your people. You have called and gathered us also to be your people. Open our hearts to listen and gladly obey your word as your children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Spirit, equip the pastors, teachers, missionaries, deacons, and leaders that you have called to proclaim God's word. Give them wisdom and courage as they admonish, absolve, teach, and point everyone to Jesus, so that the saints might be prepared for Jesus' coming again in glory. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. Heavenly Father, you have, you have gathered your people together under Christ in this place, and you have made us partakers of your grace. Strengthen our faith and give us courage to share the hope that is ours. Bless the ministries and outreach of Maria and Zion, as well as the ministry of Reverend Ramirez in Nicaragua. May our love and caring for all be seen and experienced by all to your glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, bless all husbands and wives, fathers and mothers, as they go about their joy and service of marriage and raising children. Let their love abound more and more, inspired by Jesus' unconditional love for us. Lord, in your mercy, O oh God, inspire us to wait for you in hope, serve you joyfully, and give to others generously. Lord, in your mercy, Gracious Lord, grant healing for all the sick. Give courage to the faint-hearted. Bring hope for the discouraged. And give clarity to all. Lord, we lift up those who are known to us. We especially lift up Annette. We lift up the ongoing struggle in Madagascar. We lift up all those afflicted with COVID and those who are in fear. Lord, we lift up all the flooding things and those who are stepping up to help in any ways that they can. Lord, we lift up all in our hearts. We lift them in the outcomes to your loving mercy and grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we rejoice with those celebrating birthdays, baptismal birthdays and anniversaries this week. We thank you for the blessings of the past and entrust them to your future care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. And we pray the prayer our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing of the Lord. May God give you the faith of Abraham, the hope of Isaac, the joy of Elizabeth, and the gratitude of Zechariah. God make you strong 
and courageous as you wait upon the Lord. Amen. Amen. We close with our closing hymn, number 338, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus.
God's been good through our churches and the people, so that's for sure. Um, what else needs to be made mention of? Elizabeth. Um, tomorrow night is our Women's Fellowship Christmas Gathering. Uh, we do have a sign-up sheet up in the foyer, so if you are planning on coming, please sign up uh, because we have to watch our numbers. So right now it's going to be at Mary Ann's uh, place in the common room at her apartment complex. Uh, but if we have too many coming, and please don't sign up thinking, oh, I'll let other people go. No, we want you to come. But if there are too many, then we'll just have it here in the education wing because we can have more here. Uh, but please sign up, and then if you're hanging around for, for donut time, I'll take a look at the list, count, and if you're here, I'll let you know where we're going to be, either at Mary Ann or here uh, at the, in the education wing. Uh, prayer group will be meeting Tuesday night, 7.30 to 8.30. Anyone is welcome to join us. And this is, will be the last time we get together in 2021. Um, we'll meet again in January. But if you'd like to come out and pray with us on Tuesday, we'd love to have you. Thanks. Anybody else have anything? Just note, um, today is our fellowship time in our education wing. I, I do want to encourage you that as you're going in, keep your masks on. Don't take them off until you actually sit. We did have a local scare with COVID, and so we not in our church or anything, but in our community. So we want to make sure we're as cautious as we can. So make sure you keep your mask on until you're seated. Then, then you can take it off to eat okay. and beverage. Nice. Just Cindy, to mention that I did put the sanitizer out if you want to do your hands. And if you need to sanitize again, Cindy yeah. has it sitting the right The sanitizer is there. And Perfect. thanks to everyone who's donated so far to our hats and mittens. And the tree will be up until Christmas. So you are welcome to do that if you would still like to. Perfect. That's all. Okay. If nothing else, go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.